Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Um, the one thing that we know uh, coming is the utility of today is not going to be the utility of tomorrow. Uh, utilities will have to change um, as everything around it is changing, including um, things such as the technology. You've got electric vehicles, battery storage, um, the more improvement in um, renewable energy, uh, and more demands uh, and more requirements. Um, data itself is going to explode with the implementation of smart meters, uh, so there'll be more data available, more sensors in the network, uh, are more data available to understand what's going on, and the grid itself will work differently. And the consumer at the end is going to have different demands as to what they have today. Um, they're becoming more educated, they understand more, uh, about what they want and, and how to get it, so they, they, and with all of the changes, they're going to need to be educated. Some of the changes, um, evolving regulatory environment. We know that um, you, know, you see changes in the regulations today, um, again, uh, promoting smart meters, uh, renewable energy, um, and it's going to change tariffs. Uh, and this is going to happen, uh, and it needs to be uh, understood, and uh, utilities will need to um, cater for that. The changing customer demands, as I mentioned earlier, uh, customers will want more, uh, and they probably will use less, less electricity, but they will want more. And so together with that, um, we need to look at the technology that's available to support um, the utility and what the utility is doing in the future. Um, and. Uh, to manage uh, the regulatory environment and the customer demands. Technology, um, smart meters is one, uh, smart devices in the network, um, cloud computing, big data, even mobile devices will become more uh, prevalent in utility and particularly in communication. Utilities still have to deal with uh, issues of today. You have um, uh, outages, whether they storm or other related, uh, those need to be com need to be repaired. Uh, they need to be repaired safely and quickly. And customers need to understand uh, what's going on uh, around the outages and how long the outage will be. Um, solar uh, energy, and particularly um, solar, is coming into into India and is becoming more prevalent. Uh, as an example, in Australia, uh, by 2030, 2030, they're predicting that um, PVC rooftop generation will outstrip coal generation in Australia. So those things are going to change. Um, managing um, extreme heat and stress in the network. Uh, I know Delhi uh, during the summer months has extreme heat and I've been here and I've seen uh, some of the implications with power. Um, that is going to need to be managed more, understand how to manage the network, um, what things can do. And the new technology will help that and again, the um, consumer is going to uh, be impacted by all of this and they will need to, will need to communicate with them more. Um, and, and such things, you know, we need to improve network management, um, proactive demand management so that we can manage the, the demand uh, of energy more. We need to integrate renewables um, and expand uh, the devices and, and, and as IoT becomes more prevalent and support the um, pricing and tariffs that are going to change with smart meters, uh, which will also help in managing demand uh, of um, electricity. But more than anything, uh, it's an opportunity for the utilities to help um, shape smart cities. Um, smart cities are going to require a lot more uh, support and they're going to change quite a lot. Regulatory environment is going to change quite a lot. Uh, renewable um, integration, um, there's going to be quite a lot of um, changes in how buildings work with smart buildings, using smart power, smart devices, smart lights as um, before, you know, LED lights. All of these things will come into play. Smart homes uh, and consumer technologies will change. And then you'll also have to deal with um, sensors out in the field and in the grid um, with the changes of the um, network and the utility. The one thing in this is rather than taking a short-term view of what a utility needs to be, I think utilities will now need to start to look at the long term. So not only what's coming to tomorrow and what's coming in 12 months time, but start to look at where you're going to be in two to three years time and start to prepare for that because it is it will be a journey and it will need a lot of support. 
if we look at um, okay, um, if we look at just data, um, the increase of um, utility sensors will probably increase about 21 percent. Um, sensors that are available in buildings, 42 um, percent, and then devices and sensors that are in homes, probably 83 percent. So you'll go from you know, data today of um, what we do and what we look at to data that's available and there'll be this big hole of, of data in which people need to look at, well, I've got all of this data, how do I use it? What does it mean? What can it tell me? How, do it, how does it help me manage my utility? How does it help me uh, interact with the customer? And in a survey uh, recently, 12% um, of CEOs said that they understand the impact of data. So that's not a lot. Um, so we need to help them understand that. Other industries have um, already started to, to leverage data. If you look at um, transport, Uber. Uber has come in uh, and with their change in model uh, of using um, people with their own cars uh, and a different marketing um, model, uh, they've been able to get into the market and, and overtake in a lot of places taxis. Uh, so because they don't ha have the, um, they don't have to build the, the capacity of their fleet, they already have a fleet of people with their cars. Um, companies like Amazon. Amazon has 300 million users and it does a lot of an analytics around its users and looking at that to then personalise the pages when people come on so they can sell more and they do. They do that quite a lot. Yahoo is another example. Yahoo has uh, millions of users and, and they also look and do a lot of analytics around their, their consumers to understand how to personalise for that and also with all of the, the um, videos that are uploaded into, Uber and into YouTube every day, how do you then push them out to the various people so that they can um, get a better experience? And that's made them one of the, the top companies in, in media today. So the utility has to look at all of this and, and work out with all of this data, how do they effectively use this data to change the role of the utility and to you know, see the future of the energy industry and how, how is it going to fit and how is it going to support. Um, there's going to be you know, more data, we've already spoken, coming from generation, from transmission, um, from the, the distribution networks. We're going to have more renewable energy, electric vehicles, and in all of this, there'll be um, what we call disruption. Um, traditionally, how energy is sold today and who the competitors are will probably change. Um, you can see um, renewable energy companies coming in and competing with the um, traditional electricity companies. So, um, <coughs> again, uh, data. Uh, the utility is going to have to embrace the data revolution. Um, with all of the data coming from the, smart, from the smart meter, it is going to change meter to cash. So what data you get from the meter and how you actually take that and, and build your customer and how you interact with your customer. Um, today, most uh, organizations or most um, um, suppliers don't um, really cater for that very well. So the, the mess that is, is going to come from that needs to be considered by the utility. How are they going to be able to leverage all of this data 15 minute interval reads, um, how do you actually take that? How do you actually use that with your customer? How do you bill it? How do you use it? From a, an Oracle perspective, um, this is an area that we have um, um, done quite a lot of work in the last few years, or probably the last 10 years, uh, in working globally with, um, with uh, customers and utilities. And we consider ourselves to be the only smart meter to smart customer solution around. We have our metadata management product, which looks at the metadata and how to, how to process that and provide valuable data to the utility and to the customer. Um, we have our uh, solutions like Data Raker, which look at, with all of the sensors in the network, how do you actually improve and predict things within the network? How do you manage the network better? And uh, in particularly, in talking to the customer, our Oprah our product, which takes data and does analysis of customer behavior and trends and what messages that you want to give out to the customer to manage them. So um, I think we've covered this a fair bit. Um, smart utilities are going to have to look at renewable integration. It's coming. Electric um, vehicles, 
um, over the next few years, that's going to get pushed quite a lot, particularly with the uh, impacts of environment and the rollout of smart meters is going to have um, a profound impact on the amount of data that's available and um, the way the network is managed. And just looking at renewables, for, for example, um, renewables um, are going to change the distribution network planning. Um, today, if you, as an example, if you look at the way uh, capacity is worked out, you have base loading um, generation and you have peak loading. Um, renewables aren't necessarily always good base loaders, but they will become part of the base loading platform. Um, so the baseline uh, for ba uh, the base uh, loaders will actually be variable rather than static. Um, and yeah, that's also going to go into uh, capacity planning. Um, it's going to look at how, how the, um, probably the, particularly the uh, distri distributed energy resources are managed within the network, how they're maintained, billing is going to change, um, and also customer impact. And in the middle, again, we always look at the customers of the person at the end, and they're the ones who are going to um, give you good feedback, bad feedback. They're always going to be the person at the end that you have to deal with. So we, want, we very much want to make sure that anything that we change, we can make that a positive impact for the customer. And we do quite a lot of work on that. Um, again, I'll go through quickly because I know time. Complex billing. Um, with um, smart meters, you have more da more data, and you can have um, you will end up having more complex billing, uh, time of use, uh, time of day, different tariffs, um, and uh, and that's also to help manage the demand and, and get people to use electricity at a different time. So the bill is going to change. Our our customer care and billing system does all of the things around billing today with the complex billing, and more importantly than that, you're going to have to educate your customer. The customer is going to get a different bill. He's going to see changes in the bill. And our OPA product does a lot of analytics around what the bill the customer would get today, what the changes are, and then how do you communicate and explain that to the, uh, to the customer. Electric vehicle impact. Um, and this is, a, um, as you can see, a trend over time. And you can see on a uh, you'll see the seasonal thing where it gets um, peaks is, is to um, the, the summer and it drops off a little bit in, in winter. But towards the end here, in and around October, is when an electric vehicle starts to come into this particular transformer. And it changes the load. It, in fact, it increases the load on the transformer 71%. So um, that has going to have very interesting implications as electric vehicles come into the network and how you manage that. And part of how you manage that is, again, um, two things you need to be conscious of is the actual impact to the network itself uh, and what that does, what needs to be managed, how do you manage load on transformers, and our data raker product does that, um, does a lot of work in and around understanding that. And then the second part is to understand the customer and get the customer, um, we use OPOW to do communication with the customer to put them on different programs to, to charge their vehicle in off-peak times rather than in peak times. So start to manage the load into the network by helping manage the customer. Um, and then as you start to roll out smart meters, um, on the left-hand side we have analytics, um, and there's three parts to that is, you know, you get, an, you get a new meter on and it starts up, you need to make sure it's working, uh, you need to ma maintain, make sure and monitor the health of the, net, of the smart meter. And in the end, in some cases, some smart meters don't work at all. So you have to go out and replace them. Managing the, um, the network operations, um, in particularly the load uh, in particular areas. So you start to go down to managing not just the major network, but down to managing at the transformer level. So you can maintain uh, a good uh, supply of power and again, engagement with the customer. The customer is going to need to know things are changing and you need to make sure that they're on the journey and, they've, and they're getting... Yep. I'm going to skip this next slide and I'm going to go to the end. Um, again, one of the things I've pushed um, and quite heavily in here is communication with the customer. The customer at the end of the day is the one who pays the bill. They're the ones who can be very complimentary and they can be very negative and create lots of problems. 
a lot of this is how do you manage the customer, what data you can use, etc. So thank you for your time.